everyone, and welcome to 1923 Main Street, home of the Daddy Daughter Disney Travel Podcast. We are your hosts. I am Mike Bellobradic, and I'm Amelia Bellobradic. And today we're going to be teaching you how to pick the Walt Disney World Hotel that's right for you. I don't know if I'd say teaching you. I would, and you're gonna, I will. You're going to school people. Yes. I think this online schooling is having an effect here. I think we're more going to discuss how you go about picking the one that's best for you. And if they take away information, isn't that being taught? Well, they may learn something. I see your point. But you know, the thing is that uh, more and more now we're starting to feel like we're getting out of this pandemic. And I've seen chatter picking up about actually starting to book hotels. So we thought <gasps> now's a good time well. to, yeah, to start talking about how do you go about picking the hotel that's best for you. And if you've been once, twice, or five times, then you start to get an idea and you might want to try some different ones. So we or hope you'll find like some valuable. if you're like us and have been 26 or 100 times, well then. <laughs> yeah, then you have a really good idea and we're going to share that with you today. But if you've never been before, and I remember this from the days when I was selling travel, First of all, I always say stay on site. So rule number one for this episode, we are talking about how to pick the best Walt Disney World on site hotel for you. But even if you decide, oh, well, I'm going to stay on site. Well, yes, that's a definitive decision. But you now have 30 choices. 31 choices, Uh, technically. Well. Like 31 flavors of ice cream. I think that's what it is, a Baskin Robbins. I would not know. But you do. So that's where people go, what? I have 31 choices. 30. So how do you narrow it down? And the reason Amelia's saying 30 and 31 is Disney does count the campsites at Fort Wilderness as a value resort. And I don't. So if you are coming with a tent or a trailer, I guess your point, Amelia, is you have one choice, but it is still of the 31. So we now know that there are values. So your first decision is there are four categories, and that's where I always like to start, right? There's four categories of resort hotels. Can you name them? There's value, there's moderate, there's deluxe, and the I like to think there's three classes, but the fourth category is deluxe villas. And deluxe villas, and you know what I think the irony is? What? The deluxe villas category, which is probably the least known to any Disney traveler who's is the largest. Is the largest. (laughs) By far. By far. So you've got six options in the value, five hotels in Fort Wilderness Campground. You've got five in the moderates. You've got eight deluxe resorts, and you've got 12 deluxe villas options. So the first thing to notice here is of the 31 choices, 20 of them are deluxe. And Walt Disney's vision to be immersed in the magic really is why there are so many deluxe resorts, in my opinion. But let's start at the bottom. Yeah, and see, I I have to say, you have to pick, like, your class, right? Your expensive hotel and what you're expecting to get in a hotel room. So let's start with, how do you pick? So the first question is, we know there are 31, is which category generally is how I look at it. And here's what I would say, see if you agree with me. If you want... The least expensive, a budget, sort of cheapest Disney vacation, and you want to stay on site, you're staying value. Which apparently are like motels. Well, I call them the Disney motels. I would know. Because they're just sort of like that. But they're still Disney. They're still surrounded by tons of oversized magic and theming and all that sort of stuff. The theming at these hotels is impeccable. I'll give them that. Yeah, But I, I mean... You know, I remember when the NBA were playing there, and they were staying in deluxe resorts mostly. And one of the players referred to them as Motel 6. So if if they're calling deluxe resorts at Disney the equivalent to a Motel 6, tongue in cheek, imagine what they would have said about value resorts. Now, if you're picking value resorts, so that's the first thing. You want to stay budget value resort for sure. That's why they're there. There are five hotel choices and they are, there's three in the All-Star series, All-Star Music, All-Star Sports, and All-Star Movies. Then there's also Art of Animation, and Pop Century. Those so are your really choices. you have three choices. <laughs> no, they're three separate hotels. Well, yes, but they're all all-star. Typically, the cheapest is one of the all-stars, usually. Now, things change. Sometimes it can be Pop Century. Personally, if I'm in this category, so the value category, the reason it's value is there are a few reasons why. First of all, They're just not as impeccably adorned, right? They are motel-like in that sense. They have smaller beds. The amenities are not as upscale. 
The properties themselves, they don't have restaurants mm-hmm. like table service. There's no shops. So they, it's more crowded. The rooms are smaller. The rooms are smaller and things like that. I mean, you know, if it's going to be the least expensive, there's a reason why. And probably the biggest one for me is the location. Yeah. So first of all, if you're on a budget, I'm not belittling anything. That's where you're going to stay. I still say it's better to stay on site at Disney Value Resort than to stay off site My, personally. These are, these are motels, but they're also not like, they're not like gross. They're still Disney exactly. hotels. Exactly. They're still right? Disney. They're still magical. They're just basic, right? They're basic Disney and that's yeah. what they're meant to be. They're meant to give people, for whatever reason, who want to stay in a lower budget hotel, a, an option on site. And that was not there for years. When Disney World opened, it was all deluxe. It was only the best hotels for many, yeah. many years. So, and then they decided that they probably needed to make an option for people who did yeah. have less income because then they could increase their profit margins and get more customers to come and experience in the joy that is Disney. Exactly. So that's what you have in the value category. Personally, I like the campground in this category, but if I were to stay in a hotel it's, personally... It's not a hotel. I would stay at Pop Century if yeah. I were going to be Again, valued. I would also stay at Pop Century. I like their design, or it does have the most rooms, I think, of any Yeah, it's large. Disney Resort, as we learned and in then my trivia episode. The option for larger families in this category is Art of Animation, which are sort of like value suites. So they're, yeah. they're more expensive, obviously, than the value other ones in this category because they're larger rooms. So if you have a family of five or six, you're definitely going to want to look at art of animation. But mm-hmm. the what I see as the biggest downfall of these hotels is value hotels are located very far from, from everything, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much far from everything. So. It's, I always see this, this, you know, the value like all stars typically is where cheerleader competitions, they're all staying there. So like you said, they can be loud, they can be busy, they can be hectic. So just a lot of families and craziness going on. Pools are very crowded there and that sort of thing. So, yeah, you know, but listen, if it is still Disney, it is on site. They're great resorts. You do just, still get magic, extra magic hours if they were there. You still get the morning ones yeah. that will be, as we discussed recently. Yeah, you still get the perks of staying on yeah, site. Whatever perks there are, you you will get them. But you will be spending all your time on Disney buses or you're going to go Lyft or Uber. So as or far, if you have a car. Yeah, as far as Disney transportation goes, it's buses only. So you may want to look for other alternatives. That's why I don't love these resorts. You're at the, down, you're at the mercy of Disney buses and that's not something yeah, you want to be Yeah, it's not something at. you want to be. It's just a lot of extra time and and in many cases, these are the people with larger families as well. So, you know, there's just some stuff to put up with. But you're still in the magic. The pools are fun. They're pretty crowded. But, you know, it's all very magical value resorts. So if your budget, that's your choice. Case closed. It gets a little trickier now as we move up the hotel resort food chain. Because we have then the moderate resorts. And Which then, aren't bad. No. Well, here's the thing. I always say... Moderates are much closer to deluxe than they are to value. Because they're moderately okay. They're moderately okay. So now, moderate resorts. We have five in this category. Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort, Disney's Coronado Springs Resort, Port Orleans French Quarter, Port Orleans Riverside, and the cabins at Fort Wilderness, which are actually a building, so I'll include them. Yes, so the cab... Okay, so now you're allowing Disney to call it a hotel. Well, it's a building. You can't call air a hotel. Right, okay. You you can't do that. So moderates, how are they different? First of all, so moderate hotels, Disney's moderate resort hotels, are actually quite nice. They are closer to to the deluxe resorts. They're very nice. The The lobbies... Port Orleans are not bad. Yeah, they look really nice. The lobbies are nice. The rooms are bigger. They do have like a two queens or a king, so they have bigger beds. They're just not as finely adorned. They are still sort of motel-like in that you enter the rooms from the outside in most, if not all, cases. But then again, Saratoga and Old Key West. Yeah, Saratoga and Old Key West are like that too, but they were built to be communities, right? They're different. They're sort of outbuildings. But that's just so if you've never stayed at one of these, whereas the deluxe resort hotels have indoor hallways like you you would experience at any nicer hotel. Having said that, they are quite nice and definitely if you can reach to a moderate from a value, do it. Yeah. The different one here is Fort Wilderness Cabins. Which they're 
they're very different. I mean, you do have the boats right to the Magic Kingdom, right? Right. So they're not quite as far as I would say other moderates are, but they're they're sort of in like the woods, right? They're like they're like a mini cabin. They're like a downscale like bungalow type thing. You know what they're sort of like? If you picture a mobile home and they put wood sort it's a of mobile rust, home a trailer. <laughs> Like an, a big trailer, um, but you put rustic wood cladding on the outside of it. That's really what they are. So they, they call Basically. them the cabins, but they're nice, right? But the same token, a lot of mobile homes. I'm just saying one. Or yeah, definitely. They're definitely quite nice, and you're away from it all. You know, here's what you want to consider for all of this, as we're only in the moderates. But you want to look at the location, your transportation options. What are the rooms like? What amenities do you get, like dining, shopping, pools, and so on? What are the grounds like? Uh, There's lots to consider. How convenient are they for getting around Walt Disney World? And And you have to pick, even though they're all pretty far, you have to generally pick a park you want to be close to. Yeah, when you get to Deluxe. We're not there yet. No, Moderates too. It's not as big a deal the Moderates because you're going to have to take... Well, let's talk about that. And theming. That was going to be my last one. So, you know, within the Moderates, someone may say, well, how do I know which... Should I pick Caribbean Beach, Coronado, one of the Port Orleans, or the cabins? Well... Port Orleans. That's... Why do you like Port Orleans? They're, I feel they're the closest to Deluxe, in my opinion. Well... The new... They're the nicest. They're the most... Like, if you look at the lobbies of French Quarter and Riverside, too, they're both very... They're ex- elegant, I would say. They kind of remind me of like a slightly downscale grand sort of. In a way, the lobby can be. And uh, French Quarter for old timers used to be called Dixie Landing before they uh, changed the name mm. many, many years ago. So those are two nice hotels for sure. They're, they're quite nice. Again, it's just dining is limited. There's no table service dining. What I do like about the Port Orleans hotels is they do have the boat to Disney Springs. Yeah. So that's sort of cool. But other than that, you're on Disney transportation. Which, Now, oh Caribbean Beach just got a boost when that Skyliner opened. As much as yes, I don't... Yes, but that Skyliner might close. Well, not for a long time. It may be down, but as much as I don't like the Skyliner, I feel that Caribbean Beach just got an edge because the Skyliner station at the Riviera Villas is right there. So I'll you, give it that. Yeah. Although... If you're not taking the Skyliner, that could be a bit of an eyesore for you. Yeah, so that is there to go to Epcot and Hollywood Studios. Well, if you're staying Caribbean Beach, you're going to do that. So Caribbean Beach got a little boost there. It's got that, obviously, (laughs) you can tell by the name what the theme is like. You know, so if you want that beachy theme, that's it. Port Orleans are more, I'd say, elegant, historic elegant. Yeah. Cabins at Fort Wilderness are very rustic. You, you get the boat that's in the Magic Kingdom Resort area. And then Coronado Springs Resort opened that new Destino, the new tower. It is quite nice, too. But I often refer to Coronado Springs as the animal kingdom of the moderates. Oh, boy. And why would I say that? What's my biggest beef with Animal Kingdom? You can't call it Animal Kingdom if it's not even remotely close to the park. Well, or anything. What are you doing? Or anything, right? Whereas these other moderates, you can take boat to Disney Springs or you've got the Skyliner. Coronado Springs, just like Disney's Animal Kingdom, is in the middle of nowhere. And that's what I don't like about it. Nice hotel, super nice, you know, really nice looking. That new tower's quite nice. Good artwork. The whole thing. Good theming. It's just, I don't like where it is. If you have a car, then who cares? All bets are off. You can go wherever you want. But if you're relying on Disney transportation, Coronado Springs, personally, I would not recommend staying Well, my tip is don't rely on Disney transportation. That's not a good move at all. Well, most people do, and a lot of people have to. So that's what, you always have Uber, Lyft options, but some people don't want to spend any more money, right? They want to take- Disney vacation is quite expensive. You just got to be prepared to add the time. The trick is always, we've talked about this in past episodes, account for time when you're making reservations. And if you're staying at a place like Coronado or the Values, you're really going to have to be sure you leave yourself enough time to get around. And what would you say the moderates are equivalent to in like uh, other hotel chains? Like, would you say they're like a Hotel 6? No, no. The moderates are not like a Motel 6. They're As someone who's never stayed at a Motel 6, yeah, like, they, could, they would be more, I have no more, idea I don't know. what that's like. They could be more like, I mean, even in the chains, but they could be more like a sort of 
mid-scale Marriott or something like that. They're nice. Yeah. They're not. The rooms are nice. They're they're outfitted nicely. The theming's good. It's just they don't have on-site shops. They yeah. don't have nice table service dining. So they're lacking a lot of things. They're just not quite as nice. And they're not in location. So if you look at all this. That, that's quite a drawback. You know, location at Disney is, well, it's everything. And location for me is everything. And even within all these, you know, the views from the rooms and all that sort of stuff is uh, you have a lot of range for price, depending on what you want to look at. And just think of it, you know, when you come to no, no matter where you're booking, if room views are an option and you're seeing prices and people go, well, is it worth it or not? I used to say to people, if you're booking a beach vacation, would you pay for ocean view or not? And if you wouldn't pay for ocean view, then you're probably not going to want to have to pay for a view at one of these hotels. You know, the cheaper rooms in some cases look at parking lots and all that. Yeah. So those are the moderate resorts. So definitely stay at a moderate over value if you can. But okay. here's where it gets interesting as we move up to deluxe. Now, I say deluxe and deluxe bill is they're equivalent in the class, right? Yeah, we're going to lump them together. Yeah, because, well, not necessarily, but in the class, they both have the same, like, room quality and they both have the same the sites are the same right because they both they have most of them nice. with the exception of three so yeah. the riviera old key west and saratoga springs are standalone resorts villas only all the other ones are yeah. on the grounds with a deluxe resort sister yeah. But I'd say most of them have, even the plain villas, they have, right, like nice grounds. Like even Old Key West and Saratoga, their grounds are nice. Okay, so before we jump into the details of it, let's talk about the category. If you can afford a deluxe resort... Please do it. Do it. You're going to Disney. Do it. Because most deluxe resorts are... The proximity is they're in, they're tied to a park or parks resort area. Yeah. And in most cases, you can walk to at least one yeah. park from these hotels. They're the best and the closest. With the exception of Animal Kingdom and Wilderness Lodge, which are why those are perennially at the bottom yeah. of my list, personally in the deluxe category. But Wilderness Lodge is also only a boat right away yeah. from the Magic Kingdom. So yeah. it's not in, as far as, say, the moderates or the values. Right. Exactly. And it is an upscale deluxe resort. Yeah. So... Within the deluxe resort category, you have Animal Kingdom Lodge, Beach Club Resort, the Boardwalk Inn, the Contemporary Resort, the Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, the Polynesian Village Resort, Wilderness Lodge, and Yacht Club. And do you want to go through this exhaustive and growing list of villas? Yes. Name them all. Can you do it? Go. Bay Lake Tower, Boulder Ridge Villas, Copper Creek Villas. Uh, so those two are at Wilderness Lodge. Say where yes. they are. Oh, sorry. Bay Lake Tower, of course, at the Contemporary. Yep. The Boulder Ridge Villas at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. And the Copper Creek Cabins also at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. Then we have the Animal Kingdom Villas, the Jambo House, and the Kadani Village, which please don't stay at them. Then we have the Beach Club Villas, the Boardwalk Villas, Old Key West as a resort as a whole. Polynesian Villas and Bungalows, Disney's Riviera Resort again as a whole, and Saratoga Springs Resort, and of course, who could forget the villas at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. Are those your favorite? Oh, well, I actually have a question for you, but we're going to hold this okay. till the end. So here's the thing now. As we said, why would you stay in a deluxe resort? So yes, deluxe resorts are more expensive. Just so much better. Better. <laughs> but I once had a client when I was selling travel and she was booking into Port Orleans because it's all she could afford. And I, I knew this family and she really is an impatient person. And I kept saying to her, listen, you're going to be spending a lot of time on Disney buses there. Oh, Can you afford to get up one level? And at the time, the beach club was the next closest thing in price. And I said, listen, a beach club with Storm Along Bay. Here's where we talk about location, amenities. It's got great dining table service, character dining. It's got the best pool at Walt Disney World Resort Hotels in Stormalong <laughs> Bay. It's within walking distance of two theme parks or a short boat ride or, or now multiple. And excellent Skyliner that's just... And I said, I know you and you're not going to be happy. You're, I said, you're going to be on vacation. Who's happy on Disney buses? And you're going to be staying at Port Orleans. Nice hotel, right? I told her. I love Port Orleans. Nothing wrong with it. But you're going to be walking around the boardwalk and going, why didn't I stay there? 
So what she did in the end was she ended up putting off her vacation till the next year. They saved more money. They went to the beach club and she came back and said, you were so right. And, you know, I, well, thank you. Uh, I know I'm <laughs> who right. Doesn't who doesn't love right? to hear yeah. they're right? <laughs> who doesn't love to hear they're right? But that's the thing. So think of it about yourself. Are you impatient? Do you want to be where the action is? Or if you don't care about those things, moderate mm-hmm. resorts are nice. I, I would yeah. lean as well towards the either of the Port Orleans or Caribbean Beach now just because of the transportation options. But if you're options. not in a rush, and even if you're not impatient, if you tend to be in a general rush or if you have lots of things booked, I would still go towards the values because Disney buses just... I don't think you realize, even if you've gone before, how annoying that one Disney bus can be Did that you makes say you miss everything. Did you steer towards the values or away from the values? Values? I was talking about moderate. Oh, I think you said values. Well, I meant... Yeah, okay. I would steer away from them. Yeah. Unless unless you're like a totally chill person who has their whole day open or you have a car, then go for it. But other than that, ugh. Yeah, moderates are nice. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, you're going to get there. You'll be going to the Magic Kingdom and you'll see, oh my God, what would it be like to stay right there at Disney's Contemporary Resort or right there at Grand Floridian or well, right there at the Polynesian? As someone yeah. who stayed there, I can tell you it feels pretty great. It does feel great. So that's, you know, that's only where we stay, deluxe resorts. We've yes. been to all the values and moderates. Well, I have. Uh, okay. But there's a reason why they're deluxe. They yeah. are immersed. They are so close to everything. They have table service dining. They usually have tons of different well, tons, many different shops. I don't know about tons. Excellent theming. Excellent theming. Views. Impeccable grounds. The pools are a cut above. Yeah. And they're not usually as crowded. So the pools get pretty hectic at like yeah. All Star Sports or Pop Century, right? Let's well, face I mean, it. They're every, pretty busy. Every pool gets hectic at Disney. It's a, there's lots of little kids, but the pools are generally a bit bigger here, which is why I feel. That probably less. With the exception of Wilderness Lodge, which is another one of my, yeah. and Animal Kingdom for that matter. I find that those pools are both undersized for the resort. So personally, yeah, we don't, we don't, I know people love it. If you're a couple with no kids and you have a car, then you might like Animal Kingdom. If you want to get it's away secluded. from it all, yeah, then Animal Kingdom's okay. And it's a very nice it's resort. It's a beautiful it's resort. It's just not. It's just not close to anything. Yeah. And, the, and Wilderness Lodge is a bit isolated for the air. It's in the yeah. Magic Kingdom neighborhood. And, yeah, but one of the main perks of staying at a deluxe resort is their proximity to the parks. And I feel Animal Kingdom just kind of throws that all yeah, right it, out the it window. It stands out there along with Coronado Springs and Every Value Resort. Those are the, if I were making a list in, of proximity, they would be at the bottom. Well... I would like you to riddle me this. Wait, let's do one more thing before you put me on the spot. All right. Villas versus deluxe. So your final choice is if you're now going, okay, I like what I'm hearing. You know, we can't cover everything in half an hour. So do some research. We're just trying to give you an idea of which category to look at. But the most confusing thing, I think, is between... If you've decided to go in this top class, well... What is a villa? We've done episodes, but why would you want to stay in it? Well, because there's more amenities and it might be a bit more expensive, but you can also go to those websites, right, to try and get points. Or if you are a DVC member, well, then that's easy for you. Okay, so let me just clear. As you say these things, not everyone may know what you're talking about. So Disney Vacation Club Deluxe Villas are part of the Disney Timeshare program. So there are members who belong to these and can stay in them, just like every other hotel chain does this, all the top tier ones. But you can also book them. And you can book them direct through Disney, or you can go to some of the secondary online sites where... Which are often cheaper. Yeah, where members will rent out their points to you, so you can get those villas for less money. And then the renters get some, convert their points to cash for that stay. So why would you stay in a deluxe villa over deluxe resort? Or would you? I'm going to ask you personally. Which do you prefer, or does it depend? Well, for me... See, that was going to be part of my question I was going to ask you. But I think given the choice, I don't know, probably a villa just because, right, you have like the fridge too. That's a main thing for me because we often buy... Villas have kitchens or kitchens. Food, yeah, right. And villas are often generally bigger. Yeah, they come in more sizes from a studio to one bedroom, two bedroom, and even some grand villas. Yeah, so if you have a large family, please... Villas might be the way to go for you. Please check into villas. They are there for Please you. Please try it. You and won't most, regret it. Yeah, most guests, average guests being someone who goes occasionally or on their first time, don't know that the villas are an option, even though they're on the website. They so are please an look option, at them. people. Please check them out. 
And anyone that has the name of a hotel in its name is at that hotel. There's just the two, or three now, sorry, with Riviera that are standalone. Yeah. And those three, especially Old Key West and Saratoga, they're still very nice. But if you want to get away from it all, you go to Saratoga or Old Old Key West. Although I might even prefer one of those hotels as a villa, right? Because it's not away that it's the main building. It's that one hotel, right? And at deluxe resorts and villas, you will have that option of view. Yeah. So bear in mind what I said. If you prefer the ocean view at a any other tropical resort, you will want to pay for the premium view. Personally, I do. I love looking at the theme park or the water. That's why I love the yeah. deluxe resorts. You never get the theme park view. What are you talking about? We always get the theme park view. Get the water view. Well, water view and theme park view are often but not always the same. And not all of them have a theme park view. It depends. That's true. So were you going to ask me something? Yes, I was going to put you on the spot now. Go ahead. Of each of these four categories, not the three classes, of the four categories, you pick one hotel from each that you would stay at. And you can explain why. I'd love to know. Okay, so this would be a recommendation then? Yeah. Okay, well... I would still, so in the value category, I would go art of animation, even though we don't need it, Mm -hmm. because you know I like oversize when I can do it. So if you were pushing me on not art of animation, I would say Pop Century. But in the value, I would go art of animation. I like the theming. I think it's nice. It's pretty much the newest one in that category. Yeah. Uh, If I had a trailer, I'd have nothing against Fort Wilderness. If you're a camper, go there. But we don't, and I don't sleep in tents. Yeah. So I would go art of animation. In the moderate category, oh boy, you see, I think I'm still going to go with Port Orleans Riverside. Mm -hmm. I like it quaint. It it has a Fort Wilderness feel to it a little bit Why before French Quarter, though? Uh, I think just what I was used to. French Quarter is nice, too, but I always liked Riverside generally. Uh, I think I would still stay there over, although a cabin at Fort Wilderness. Actually, you know what? I'm going to change my answer. I'm going to go a cabin at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort. Ooh, and okay. And if you make me pick a hotel, I'm going to go Riverside. Caribbean Beach is close, but it's still, I just don't, yeah. I don't like the Skyliner. So even though it's Yeah, option, I was going to say, why wanna, would that be a draw for you? I don't want to stay there. So, but if you do, but to anyone else who's not me, I might recommend Caribbean Beach. So <laughs> there you go, cabins. In the deluxe category, well, I'm going Grand Floridian Resort and oh, Spa. Of course. You know, I like my luxury resort hotels. Yep. And as far as Disney luxury goes, that's the best we have right now. Yep. And Deluxe Villas. This one's harder. Um, Deluxe Villas. Deluxe Villas. I think I'm still going to go for the Villas at the Grand Floridian. Yeah. With Grand Saratoga, a close second. Even though I saw someone on Twitter recently saying, oh, I stayed at Saratoga and I didn't like it because it was so big and boring. Well, I love it because it's so big and quiet and expansive and five you pools. You can't and, stand yeah. noise. Yeah. If you just want to get away from it all, stay at Saratoga and you can walk to Disney Springs. Or okay. you can try and do the pools in less than half an hour on bikes. That's what we yeah. do. Listen to that episode or we talked about it somewhere. Now. Are you uh, asking me? Yes. Before we close out. Well, since you took up a lot of time, I'll move this along. All right. Here's the kids' view, people. Well, see, I'm agreeing with you on a lot of these things. I would have to go art of animation because, well, I need space. I need to ch- out. I need to move. But again, Pop Century, close second. If you're not worrying about space, I would go Pop Century. I like that hotel. Now, I'm going the Port Orleans Resort. It really doesn't matter to me whether it's French Quarter or Riverside. Maybe Riverside just because you seem to think that's slightly more deluxe. I just like the river water rooms around there. That's all. Oh, well, then maybe French Quarter. I don't know. One of the Port Orleans hotels, I would put them above the other three. Deluxe, obviously. Grand Floridian. It's nice. It's beautiful. And it's quite expensive, which, you know, another plus. Great. It's just, it's yes, the best she one. She has champagne tastes. <laughs> it's the best one. The, even the property is the best. Now, Deluxe Villas, I'm disagreeing with you. I am going Beach Club Villas. Really? Now, I go. cannot stand staying at the Grand Floridian Villas. It's so, 
I want the actual hotel and it's right there. But when we have, you have to walk to it. And I know that sounds so stupid. Yeah, because it's about 60 <laughs> steps. But I can't stand walking those 60 steps. So and you I can't don't know stand why. staying at the Grand Floridian Villas. How spoiled are you? No, it just, it really annoys me that the hotel's right there and I can't stay okay. at it. So let me ask you this. Bay Lake Tower, Polynesian Villas, Grand Floridian Villas. Which one do you pick? Bay Lake Tower. Really? Over the Grand Floridian Villas? No, not me. Because, well, I prefer the actual Grand Floridian. It's just it's an actual tower. But maybe it's because, I don't know, maybe the okay, Grand Floridian so Villas. We're but arguing, pick... do you like ribeye or New York Strip here? They're all good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, love, I like New York Strip if you're asking. But I like Beach Club because Storm Along Bay. Yeah, Come Beach on. Uh, uh, listen. And Hollywood's the... my favorite park, too. It's right there. Boardwalk, super nice. And Storm Along Bay. So, as Beach... much as we critique these, I was going to say, because we're doing this, uh, you really can't go wrong in a deluxe resort, even Animal Kingdom, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a deluxe you're, resort. You're all quite nice. We're not all million dollar Although making basketball We've had players. issues if you listen to past episodes and look back in our catalog because we do have specific episodes on which deluxe resort and on the villa. So we have really honed in in more detail on past episodes. But today it was really where do you start and uh, some fun about how we choose what we choose. Yeah. So listen, we hope we hope you are planning a vacation yeah. right now. And if you're staying on site, I mean, you really can't go wrong. Yeah, we've had three canceled in the past year, so we feel your pain, and uh, you know we're planning once again, and hopefully this will help get you motivated to start planning some Disney vacations. So thanks yeah. for listening. Check us out on social media at 1923 Main Street on every social media platform, pretty much. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a magical day, everyone. Bye bye.